Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, I'm Tang Yuan Chou. Uh, today we are so happy to have a special lecture uh, in ICC and uh, in all our audience uh, in the Department of Hepatic Tissue and Surgery. Today we are so happy to have uh, Professor Chen to share his invaluable experience of the physician leadership. Professor Chen is an internationally well-known plastic surgeon, mastering in craniofacial surgery, and uh, has won the supreme honor of Malinian lectures in 2008 for his dedication in medical service, education, and the research. And this is how I introduce Professor Chen as a physician. But more than a physician, Professor Chen devoted himself as a physician leader for decades, such as the chief of the division of PRS, the chief of the department of surgery, superintendent of Chang'an Memorial Hospital, and uh, be a big leader to manage the world's largest hospital system with 10 thousand more beds and receive an average of 8.2 million outpatient visits every year. So today we are very happy to have the Professor Chen to share his experience. So Professor Chen, uh, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cho. Can you hear me? Well, uh, last week, Saturday, I gave a lecture to Tsinghua Memorial Hospital. Tsinghua Changgung was established uh, about seven years ago in Beijing. And uh, the superintendent, Professor Dong, wanted me to talk about uh, physician leadership in their uh, staff meeting in the whole hospital structures at the annual retreat on Saturday last week. Uh, Dr. Zhou helped me all this uh, lecture procedure through the website. And uh, I prepared this talk during the outpatient clinic and the talk with our chief residents, fellows, and Alan Yen, Dr. Yellen Yen, told me about why, how, you can be a leader uh, in the hospital as well in the society. Well, then we decided that I will give this kind of talk in our morning meeting, share with the chief residents, the directors, and the chairman of uh, plastic surgery departments. But it turned out to be that Dr. Zhou wanted me to talk through the website to everyone. Well, I think as a doctor here, I will say that he is already a leader because a doctor is the leading place in our service, not only in the operation room, but also in the outpatient area. And physician or doctor must be a leader. Otherwise, you are not leading enough the whole treatment plan. So as a doctor, you should be a leader and you already a leader and must be a good leader. Well, the first thing I share with you is that I learned, especially recent years, is the mindfulness. The mindfulness is the gratitude our appreciation of what you have or what you are today. And this can increase all the happiness and in our brain, you can work much better by this kind of mindfulness. And all the psychiatrists or the functional MRI shows the brain works much better if you have this kind of mindfulness think about others and have gratitude in your mind to appreciate what you have, what you are. So 
we should treat every patient to the best. And possibly you will have the next one. And if you keep our patient's record well, it possibly this will be an article in our journals. So every patient is my precious one. And every challenge from the hospital is my chance. And do my best and try to be the best. Actually, this is a spirit from Dr. Nordoff to us that every one of us practice every day. We practice every day, but we should practice frequently and constantly. Well, this is a um, bestseller in 2008. And Get Well always says that you should have 10,000 hours to practice one technique or one thing, and you be the master of this thing. The whole thing is like this. Now go back to how to live our team effectively. Well, this is a so-called effective phys uh, physician leadership. As a physician, and we, <clears throat> we should have a highly professional skill, knowledge, and be better than everyone in our team in some part. And after that, you have good name from the patients and their family and be popular in many ways. Because this team is strong and you may have followers. The followers may be physician or non-physicians and they are going to be one of the leader in your team. And effective physician leaders in our society, as you can see that if you are resident, when you are in the emergency room, emergency room, you are the leader to lead the students, clerk, our interns are to lead others, as well as the nurses, technicians, and all the others in the operation room or sometimes in the emergency room. And you are chief resident. I talked with my chief resident last week about how he will lead all the resident schedule, how to meet the attending staff wants to have an assistance in the OR or all the others. This is a leading uh, leadership training during his residency. As an attending surgeon, you are a leader in the outpatient clinic and as well in the operation room. If you are happy and seems to be the ultimate feel in our patients or in the OR, everyone is happy. If you are sad or you are angry, and uh, surely all the team is not very happy. When you are being the chief or director of a division, then you are the leader of that division as well as if you are chairman of the department. Surely go back to this uh, effective physician leader. We should have a team. The team may include nurses, technician, intern, clerk, medical students, or surgeons or physician in other departments. As you see many centers, you have different part of physicians in different departments. Now, what is the leadership traits? This is not limited to the medical field or so the physician. It's all uh, the same in every leadership trainees. First one, that you should have a vision. What are you going to do? What are you going to be? And what is your team going to be? Second, as a leader or as a physician, we should have integrity. Means that we don't cheat. What we say is what I'm doing. What you say should be the same as you are doing. You should dedicate it to what you are doing and you should have a big mind of magnanimity that you can uh, agree or not agree, but accept the other's idea. 
and we should have a little bit humble mind so that we can listen or learn from others. So what's your vision? What are you going to be? And this is your vision. And what's your vision of your team or your department or division? Well, as we know, as a medical center or medical team or medical personnel, the parameters of a center of excellence could be safety for patients, timely treatment, not, uh, should be effective and should be efficient and should be fair and should be patient-centered. This is all what we need for the center of essence, but whatever kind of service, especially in medical service. Then we go to the further of the leadership traits. We should have openness so that we can have more things coming in to our mind or to our team. We should have some creativity and new things comes up and to change. We should have fairness that we don't treat our team members unfairly. And we should have some assertiveness or competence. And the last one is gratitude. The gratitude is not only to uh, the, your superior, but also to your colleagues or your team members. So what is the unfavorable ones? We come back to the unfavorable, our ancestors ones, and our happy ones. Number one is unwilling to change, stubborn, and keep on the same thing that you don't follow or you don't listen to others. Second, indecisive. Every decision should be made in time. Third, you should be accountable. And the lack of accountability is the one leader which always fail because what he has said is not be trust. First one should be empathic. And if you are pathetic, and then everybody is not happy under your leadership. Surely the same as integrity. What you said should be the same as what you did. And the communication is important. Surely uh, communicate it whatever along, around you or under you. Well, if you have a highly effective leaders and there's a, some thing that's important to every leaders, the first one accountability, as I said, and then adaptability and have confidence, creativity and empathy, which we repeatedly stress that the traits of effective leaders is that this should be focused and positive and to be risk taken so that you can have some more things which is risky, but can be an adventure and to be a new things breakthrough. Yeah. Surely st stability of keeping on the good things, stay doing the same. And lastly is the team building that your team should have uh, built up more and more and higher. But this is a summary of the leadership. Number one, we should have a vision that's shared with everybody in the team so that everybody knows that what we are going and what we are going to be. And the leader should inspire the people or the members that we have the same vision. And the leader try to help and to have everybody have the power or the ability to build up, have the mission go through and go to the vision. Lastly, that the whole team should have some kind of change to improve the day by day. So how to develop these traits of leaders? First one is that you should have determined that you want to learn, you want to know, and you determine want to be a leader. Second, that you've tried to a style of the leadership. Well, the different type of style may not exist in the body, but you can sometimes change one style to the others. And third one, 
we should ask for more responsibilities through our hospital, our department, or even our group. Do for others. Last one is the communication. And surely if you have mentor that you can ask how he will do it. The leadership is not a position only. You should have an action. You are the chief, you are the chief resident, you should do like a chief resident. Not only you put this, this director or this chairman and you won't do anything. And leadership is a journey, it's a process ongoing, it's not destination, it's not endpoint, it's keep on going and changing. Well, I like this phrase that Aristotle say that we are what we are repeatedly do. Means that if you repeatedly do one thing continuously every day and you are the man. If you say lies frequently and you are a liar. So excellence is not an act, but it's a habit. So keep on the things that what we think is right, do it right repeatedly and you are this kind of person. So how can you manage the whole team? You should have the team or the division or the department have a good habit. What is good habit? We have the professionalism, focus on our specialty, focus on our patient and patient first. We should always regular meetings together so we can discuss our patients, discuss the patient's need and should discuss the mortality, mobility, and should have journal meetings. So this is a habit, and this is a good habit, and you are what you are doing every day. Again, we should attend the meeting so that we know each other well, and know the patient's need well, and know everybody. And you should attend on time, especially as a director, you should be on time, start the meeting on time, and have some report and ending or summary at end of the meeting. And surely, if possible, you can give a lecture like, like me, myself, participate in the meeting. And gradually, as a leader, you should try to organize the meeting, a meeting in any place. We go back to the leadership style. How many styles that you can have? As you see, the summary is that uh, seven styles and as a kind of uh, reference to what you want to do. Well, as a personality, everyone have differently, but you can choose whatever you want in one uh, type, type in one time. Or the autocratic is that you are strong leader, and always say that, do as I say, don't argue. Second one is, I'm strong enough, I'm the leader, follow me, I go ahead. The third one is, no, no change, everybody keep peace. The fourth one is democratic, how we decided that see everybody choice and what, what is the most agree with. The fifth is that a coaching, it means that I don't suggest, I don't do the decision, but I will give you my idea is how about consider this. The sixth one is that everybody very freely and I just listen to what superintendent said. And so you do not have any idea in your division. The last one is a kind of uh, do nothing at all, and there's no government. Well, I think in different constances, you will choose uh, the other ones. As you are senior, and like myself, I don't do any decision, but I will give you my experience, and it's a kind of coaching type. But as a leader, you can be very strong if you face into the medical students or interns that there's no other choice. But if you are facing to the senior ones in your department, then you consider about how keep or everything 
uh, everyone can agree with. As for more responsibilities, it's the one that you start, but you can train to be a leader. Participate in public affairs and committees. If anyone need help, you go ahead and do more things and you will actually will be uh, welcomed and you will be experienced. So lead your team effectively. You are the leader. As a medical profession, as you see, we should provide service, we should provide education, and we should have some medical research. It's a balance of all this as a chief or as a chairman of a department or division. But do you know your membership's salary? Income is poor. Do you know how much they can do? Their ability is high enough or they can do a lot of things which you don't know, but can help him or some others in some way and how, or how can I collaborate with him? Do I know the salary system in our hospital? How our staff get the salary of what he has or what she has? Do you know the support from the hospital that we can do studies out abroad, our studies outside the hospital, our meeting, supporting? And do you know how to organize a meeting locally or international? And who I can help, who I can find the help from? Well, do you know what kind of surgery or examination or research they are doing in the other departments? And what we can do together and what we can help them so that we can do together better. And then are you a happy chief? Your superior like you or not? Are your colleagues like to be with you or not? And why they are happy with you? Your colleagues can find help from you can find some benefits from you, then you will be welcomed. If you treat them not well, and they will go away and try to hide away from you. Surely your family supports you and you are healthy and you work very happily. And how to let your superior like you? Your superior like you because you can share his work or burden and somehow that he's happier with you because you can do the job that he wants you to do or do much help. And you are optimistic, interesting, so that to be with you, that he can be more cheerful or more positive. Sometimes you think the kind of fate that we can be together, but always that we have some kind of a common interest or it should be positive thinking so that you can go with your superior directly or more happily towards the mission or uh, to the uh, vision that we want to be. I repeatedly say that clinical investigations study with documentation and then try to classify what you have documentation uh, patients and then try to modify it and try to simplify it. This is the change, this is innovation. So we should be innovative and should be integrated with other departments and be unique in some special, special things. The innovation means that a new value, a new satisfaction now by classifying our patients or change by simplifying or modifying. It's for now or for the present. It's not for the future. So you want to change. Is that change the present status? It's not change the future only. Where is from? This change can be from from our, our patients' complaints. What they care is the points where we can change to be better or to be some way to save their time, save their painfulness, or save whatever. Uh, at cost. So the patient's complaints 
often be our clinical research idea. The patient complaints is our challenge. They want to be more safe, they want to be better results, and they want to be less expensive and save more time. They want to be no pain, no fear, and no POMV, whatever. This is our research. So our clinical investigation can work with our anesthesia, anesthesiologist, or some this ENT, sleep center, and all the others. And it turned out to be in the last few years, we do have anesthesia uh, change in some way and have papers published. Other departments cannot do what we are doing. And sometimes it's an innovation for them, but it's a challenge and chance for us. Uh, we can apply our technique to do whatever together. I'm happy to, to know that Dr. Zhang working with chest endoscopic surgeon and then do the new things possibly to solve the patient's problem, the hyperhidrosis complications. And the other department's routine can be our innovative procedures. As I said, like a chest surgeon can do whatever they can do through endoscope and then how we can combine together and it's a new procedures and the new uh, innovative things. The dentist, they can do extraction or molars much better than we do. And we work together in the OR and we can learn the new things from them and it's our innovation. And it can be a paper comes out. A company leader should be innovative and the most things is the courage to change. As I said, this is one of the traits that we should have, the courage to change. You may know this as a cranial field surgeon, you know the International Society of Cranial Field Surgery. This is a logo. And the logo underneath is the name of the society and on the top is this word, I don't know what really sounds from the French, but it says that, why not? This is a word that Paul Tessier always said in the OR, where the visitors are the fellows and say that, Professor Tessier, can we do this way or why don't you do the other way? And he will say that, why not? Let's do it. This is a challenge. This is a courage to change not only in the OR, but also in many other ways. It's the openness of your mind of the leadership that you can have the chance to have the possibility of the new things or the new way of doing it. So it's the competence leader should have some kind of new things comes in. A self change is a reborn, but if you do not change, you are being changed, that's perish, you are finished. A company leader should pass the torch on. Means that there's a law called Peter's law, is that everybody is in a position where you are not good enough. Means that if you do not prepare to be better, to be a higher position, then you are not capable. What I mean is that you are chief residents and you prepare yourself to be an attendee and you should pass your chief residents to the next one. As I said, you are director, you are the chief, you are the chairman, you are prepared that someday you should pass, pass this torch to the other one. Are you going to be the same way the lifelong it's impossible and it's not a good leader as well. So teaching is so important that you see one, how others can do, and then you do by yourself. And then you are the one that repeated doing and then try to teach one so that you can pass the torch on. This is what William Stott, a always said that 
see one, do one, and then teach one. And when you are teaching, then you know better by teaching because you know how much you don't know. And you know well by teaching. So improve your communication skill is important for the leader's trait as well. And how can you improve your communication? I learned from all the books or the past experience that start with smile, start with say, I'm sorry. And you can start with, it's hard for you. And our communicate, our say congratulations, you have good results. Then try to listen. Listen your team members, uh, complaints or uh, ideas or everything. The typical one is to share the benefits. Share the benefit means that share the time or money payment or schedule time that favor for you. Try to help the, your members better than you yourself. Then you will be respected and actually you get more. The last one is share the vision. Empower everybody that doing more. As, as I said, it's the most difficult part is the shared benefits. You get more. And actually, this is uh, what Dr. Lai, Professor Lai, uh, Dr. Lai and Lai Yongnong told me that when he lead his hospital group or the physician group, it's uh, shared benefits. The last one, surely the vision, the empower. Well, as I said, a competent leader that you should pass the torch on my teaching and my sharing. So a sustainable organization or team or a department should be a good leader, always have a new ideas comes up and the courage to change. Well, the Chairman Wang always says that there's nothing easy and yet there's nothing impossible. If you're determined to do it well, you will have it. And I will say that if you have determination and then you should have a good habit. So make a good leader great. As I uh, was given this picture by Dr. Luo Chumei, he, she learned in his MBA class and say that a boss is sitting there on the chair of the mission and try ask everybody who pull this forward. But a good leader is that going in the front, going together to carry all the mission to the end, to towards the vision. Again, I will share with you this word. We are what we repeatedly do and essence is not an act, but a habit. So build up a good habit of a good leader and you are a good leader. You are an effective leader. Thank you very much. Okay, do you have any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, yes. <clears throat> please, Professor Lin. Yeah, thank you, Professor Chen. That uh, it's a wonderful and uh, awesome lecture that really inspiring everyone, uh, even uh, as a leader or not a leader, uh, trying to learn how to be a leader. But my question is that uh, for some people, they we call them a, a native leader. 是一种很天生的自然的这种领导能力 Some people are, are, are not as a good one And can some uh, leadership training can, can, be, can be learned from the others or, or how, uh, if, if, if someone that is not a, as, a good, as a good one 
what do you think about that? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is always debated and this has always uh, been asked. Is it kind of a leadership? Is it charisma or is it born like that way? Or you can learn what can be a good leader. Well, in the past, I believe that uh, everything can be learned. And every, every, uh, everything that we can learn from others. But in somehow, this kind of charisma is we build up during the last, yes, from the birth to uh, the 20s or uh, when you are in chairmanship. What I say is that a leadership training or the charisma is starting from primary school from middle school. As you can see, this kind of characters or traits of the leadership, you can see that in the classmate of your primary school or in middle school. But when we are old enough and we know what is a welcome, what is a good leadership traits and try to make the character or charisma type to be your own. And that's what the MBA class are the degrees that we learn. And so all these traits are good traits and we can train ourselves and to be a better one. Well, for myself, I share with my residents or fellows saying that from the primary school or middle school, you gradually have this kind of interest. I try to help others. I try to be enthusiastic to be the public uh, matters, and then you gradually involved and you be welcomed and be a gradually a leader in your school group. So this is not a kind of inborn, but somehow a kind of character where you learned maybe from your parents, maybe from your brothers, maybe from others you see. I think I myself, I learned from books, reading books, reading the novels of books where I like the orthography of Lincoln, uh, of orthographies of some great men, then gradually you will input into your mind and try to be the same or similar. And when you are adult, when you are a chief now, I think still we can learn and we still learning, try to be more open, try to practice the gratitude, try to thank others. And this kind of leadership traits can be gradually built in to your own body. And this is what an MBA course practice, practice and practice and can be your own characters. So this is what I can suggest is that find one style of the leadership, try to practice all the traits, good traits of the leadership and then you can be one of them. Thank you. Uh <coughs> Yes, okay, we have uh, two questions from the audience. And the first one is from Fayaz. Uh, he wants to ask Professor Chen, uh, sometimes the team members do not have a good mental equilibrium. So how would how you would overcome it? Can you say that again? The, two? the team members do not have a good mental equilibrium. Mental equilibrium. Well, I will say that you cannot ask your team members to be everyone is very good. But as a leader, how can you find what is the good part of that member? I know that everybody has the downside or not good enough, or not happy in some way. But as a leader, you can do two things. One is that expel him and try and not accept him. The other one is accept him, but should collaborate with him, find a good part of him, and then do together the way that we can work together to the mission. So what I will say is that unless you want to expel him out, otherwise 
try to find his good part and then work together towards our vision. So this is what I would suggest. Okay, we have the next question from Professor David Tron. Yes, yes. Please, Professor Tron. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Chen. Give us uh, an, another, you know, inspired uh, lecture. I just very interesting to know because you, we all know you are famous not only in the academic position. You are also very successful in the administrative, administrative position. Can you just briefly tell us what are the advantage and disadvantage to be? A academic uh, uh, physician and uh, uh, administrative, uh, you know, physician. Well, it is always a choice, and it always give and take. You cannot be uh, fully academic uh, physician. And at the same time, you are the best uh, leader so that you can be everything. No, it's always give and take. And EO is a kind of, uh, you can say it's a sacrifice or you can see that it's a choice. Well, when I was promoted to be the director of the hospital or the superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Sire, Dr. Monroe, and all the senior cranial field surgeons say me that why waste your time as a big sur or a good surgeon to be a, a demonstrator to serve other people administrative work. It's kind of waste. Well, in Taiwan, as you know, all the hospitals leaders should be in the position. The second is that I feel that I was respected and I feel I learned something or happier in some way. So it's my choice to be, to serve other people by doing the superintendent. And actually, when I look back, I learned more by doing as the director of a hospital to, so that I can be with like, Dr. Zhang Zhaoxiong, like Wang Yongxing, like uh, Chairman Wang. Well, I know that really a kind of entrepreneur, a chairman of a so big enterprise and what he thinks and why he thinks that way and how he can handle thousands of employees and millions of billions of dollars and what he's thinking. So the value of a human being and the value of a leader and the vision of the whole country and vision of the whole company. This is to make my mind to be widened and to, I learned a lot of this kind of philosophy and I see the growth, the, the prospect of the company and how can I achieve that. So this is what I cannot learn from being a physician only. So this is life and I am happy to sacrifice my clinical time and research time and to be a so-called leader or so-called administrator to serve some other people. Thank you. You just mentioned uh, your teacher tell you weak. You also mentioned you might sacrifice some more work about your academic work. And uh, you also say you're happy or to both. And uh, because you know the everyone ability is the is has a limitation has a limitation. I saw what I see from you is after you uh, involve in the after you involve in the administrative part in the administrative work. I saw you were creative in the academic part. A significant decrease. This is what I see. Because you pay too much attention in your, in the administration. So because the time is all fixed, 24 hours a day, they are all fixed. 
So you cannot uh, you cannot to be expert in both sides. This is what I think. Maybe I'm wrong because your beat is much much stronger than me. But uh, from my point of view, uh, if you to pay much to uh, pay that, I think depend on the your intentionality. If you intend to be a good academic physician, then you should be a real academic, you know, concentrating your academic. If you are to be a, a successful administrative physician, then you, of course, you have to pay too much time and pay too much in this part. So to me, you cannot uh, both, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, hold the both position, hold the both condition. So can, can, you, <laughs> can you tell me, this is maybe a little bit serious question to you, but uh, also a serious question to me. Yes, you are right. This is choice. And this is a, a, a kind of a destiny as well. Number one is that you cannot expect a Nobel Prize winner researcher to be a, a city mayor or some other administrative work. No, it's a choice to be the pure scientist or very uh, well-known or very deep research. And yet, you are a leader in your research lab or some kind of research lab. And this kind of leadership traits by co collaborate with your colleagues and can help you to be a better research work. And this is very similar. I will agree with you that the hospital administrative work is not the same as the uh, research work or clinical research work in our uh, medical field. It's a kind of sharing. Everybody have some part of the work where the society needs. It cannot everybody to be a researcher. No, you should be somewhere, somebody that can share some time or spend some time in the administrative work in the other world. So I agree with you somehow. One person cannot choose to be everything. You should focus on one thing which you are happy with, you are good at, and then you will be a top part of that. But I will say that as a leadership in our medical field, everybody should have some kind of traits to be a leader, at least in a small group. And then you pass the leadership to be the next generations. You cannot keep this uh, leadership the whole life. Thank you very much. After your explanation, I feel much better. I feel much better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Professor Chuan. And uh, one more question uh, from the audience uh, is an uh, easier question. Uh, you want to ask Professor Chen about, uh, you have mentioned a lot of leadership trait. Uh, one who can achieve all of this is not a leader, but a saint. So can you point out uh, three the most important character a good leader need uh, in the first development? Well, the 10 characters or maybe 20 characters that the leader have, does not mean that everybody should have all the traits. And or the other way is that even the same traits that you can have a different top, 100% or 70% or only 50%. But I will give you a, a important thing is, number one, the most important one is uh, accountability and integrity. Well, as you know, uh, but that's, uh, the company, TSM. TSM, the founder of TSM, uh, Zhang Zhongmo, he put integrity as the most important thing of his company, that what they do never cheat, never put their customers uh, in a position where it's the loss. The integrity is the most important in their companies. So I think you can choose whatever you want, try to be better, but you cannot possess everything better. For myself, I think that I know I will try to be integrity. I keep the integrity. What I say, 
is the same that what I am doing. And I will keep this as my habit. So, well, all these are good ones and you choose one and do that constantly to be your habit, then you will be much happier. Thank you. Okay, is any more questions? If there is no uh, any more questions from the, the cloud, from the ICC's audience, uh, I have to say thank you for your coming to join this uh, excellent presentation. And we have to thank Professor Chen again for his excellent educational, comprehensional, very uh, inspiring lecture today with us. So have a good day and have a good night. Have a nice day. Thank you for your participation. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.